Dear Lord, we come to you recognizing that you are God, you are great, you are holy, you are mighty, and we are us. And we need you, Lord. We need you every hour, every moment, every day. We confess this need for your strength, and we rely on you, Lord. We thank you for the forgiveness you offer in Jesus Christ. Forgive us again and again for those things that we do and say and don't do and don't say that are outside of your will, Lord. We seek to honor you and praise you with all of our lives. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness and for your love. Let us praise God in song. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Christ is that we have that forgiveness, we know that forgiveness when we humbly come to him. So we rejoice, we praise him by how we live our lives. And we're going to talk about that this morning in our sermon, but first I invite um, the kids. We got a kid, and we got a kid. We got a kid. Get close. You want to come? Yeah, okay. So, come a little closer. A little closer. I won't throw any water. No water. No water. Um, so do you see this here? It is a bright red color, right? Do you know what's like connected to that? No. Nah. Nah. So I'm going to show you. But first I want to tell you about something that happened back in January. In January, I got on a plane and flew to Florida. We can't do that anymore. But back in January, I could do that. And we went to a mission conference where there were missionaries from all over the globe, and there was a man from India there. And he was wearing this thing, and it's like, that looks really familiar. I think I've seen those symbols before on the clothes that he was wearing. And do you know what was on the back of, of his vest? It was something like that. What's on the back of my vest? A bowl and... Arrows, well, they're spears. See, you guys just don't know anything about spears, I tell you, kids these days. It's like you grew up in America where you don't hunt with spears. All right, so this is a vest from a missing, the missing tribe, and they say that because they like were tracing him, and then they disappeared, and they're like, we'll call them the missing tribe, and then they were like, oh, they were up in the mountains. Um, but anyway, so this is the missing tribe in India, and this man had visited there, and he had and done work there, giving them the Bible, and they gave him a vest like this, and then I was there, and it's like so cool, because I ran into somebody in Florida who was from southern India, who had gone to northern India, and been to the same place I was, and we knew because of the vest that they were wearing. And so there are things like that where we can say, oh, you're from there because you're wearing this. Now, if somebody was to say, how do we know somebody's a Christian? It's not so much the clothes that they wear, but what would, how would somebody stand out as a, being a Christian, a Christ follower? What do you think? Praying to God. Praying to God. So somebody who prays regularly, that would say, oh, there's a praying person. What do you think, Carmen? Um, believe in God. Yes. Yeah, so, so you believe in God, you pray to God. What else might they do? Be kind. Yes. Be kind. Oh, like... Wait, they were forgiving. They were loving. They were kind. They took a care of people who were being bullied and mistreated. That's the type of stuff that God says, that's what I want to see. That's the clothes I want you to wear is kindness and goodness. And we're going to talk more about what God wants to see in, in the message this morning. So I hope you guys, when you go to school, you are wearing the clothes of a Christian of being kind and nice and caring and helping those in need. So let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for the fact that you are reaching around the globe, transforming lives, and you also want to transform our lives and these kids' lives. Help them to know you, love you, and serve you. 
In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Again, no candy, but I'm soon. All right. So, I'm so glad you're here this morning. And you look like you need to snuggle somebody warm, so, so go snuggle. All right. You going to have a seat? Just that mask makes it so amplified. We are in the year of the Bible, and we are looking at all of God's word for all of God's people. And in this um, season, we're saying, how do we listen to God? It is a chaotic time. Um, more news and more news and more unexpected happens. And how is this going to impact the world? How is this going to impact the elections? How is this? All these chaotic things. How do we listen to God? And I want to start by saying, we can act like we're trying to hear from God. We can act like, oh, hey, God is really important to me. But sometimes our heart isn't in it. We can go through the motions, and sometimes we're just going through the motions. And the world, we can say, hey, I want to look. To the world like I'm a good Christian. I want to look like I'm doing what I'm supposed to. And the reality is, this may be shocking to you, but we sometimes forget it, I think, is that God knows the difference. God knows the difference of whether we're going through the motions or if we're really truly pursuing God with our lives. Um, so there are sermon notes you can pull out if you want to. Um, but we're going to look into Psalm 58 and about what God knows, what God cares about, what we should be doing with our lives. Because it starts out in Psalm, uh, Isaiah 58, if I said Psalm, I meant Isaiah 58, the prophet Isaiah, who was sharing God's messages um, to God's people. And he starts out in chapter 58 saying, My people know my ways. My people seem eager to come near to me. They fast, but, but, well, they sense that God really isn't there in it. They humble themselves, they bow down, but they feel like God hasn't noticed. Why is this? Maybe you've experienced that in your life, where it's like, well, I think I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, but it doesn't seem to be connecting me with God. It doesn't seem to work with God. So this morning, I want to look at the scriptures of what opens up that channel between us and God. What helps us connect between um, God? And, and I, I don't know why it feels right to just say a, a channel, a connection, um, where, where God can come to us and we can connect to God. How do we open that up? And there isn't a formula. There isn't a, well, if you spend six minutes doing this and 12 minutes doing that, and if you read your Bible in this way and you pray in that way, and you, if you meditate in these moments, and if you um, fast, and if you give... It, there's not a specific formula, but all of these things and so many more are the ingredients God uses. So I don't want to say, okay, well, here, ching, 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 do this, open up this channel, but all of these things are part of opening that up. But I want to sort of narrow in on that last one of fasting. Now, fasting is not something that we really talk that's really unpopular in America. What, go without food? <laughs> I mean, most Americans really, you know, as soon as we're hungry, we're like, where's something to munch on? Where's something to eat? We don't, we're not familiar with, with really hunger and doing it on purpose as a sign of devotion to God. That, that's like foreign, and, and I've had be, oh, I, I can't do that. It's like, well, probably you could. There are like a billion people on the planet that do it for a month every year of the Muslims during Ramadan, that unless they are sick, really young, or really old, they fast from sun up to sundown. And when you're in Norway, that's a long time. All right? <laughs> you know, and, and I was talking to a Muslim, and they're like, yeah, you know, it depends which heaven you're in. Yeah, they go beginning to end fasting as a sign of devotion to God. And, and that's like, what fasting is supposed to be about. But it can be lost, and in the time of Israel, they were big on fasting. 
but something had been lost. It was just going through the motions. Even something as apparently devout as depriving yourself of food out of devotion for God can just be an empty ritual. And that's what Isaiah 58 focuses on and then provides an answer to. So I'm going to read a, a pretty good section of it from verses 3 through 11. Yet, on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends with quarreling and strife. You, in striking each other with wicked fists, you cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. This is the kind of fast I have chosen, says the Lord. Only a day for a man to humble... Oh, is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord? It seems like, yeah, that's what we're supposed to do, right? It's not this the kind of fasting I have chosen. To loose the chains of injustice to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe him? Do not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then, then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you do away with the yoke of oppression, with a pointing finger, with a malicious talk, if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry, satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness. Your light, your night will become like noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Don't we want that? Don't we want God to say, here I am? Don't we want God to answer? Don't we want God to guide you? Always? So I said, he will guide you always. I think that sounds really good to me. Of God listening and, and, and God speaking out so that we have something to listen to. There are ways to block this communication and ways to open up this communication. But it starts off with that realization that if our religion is just for show, God knows. All right? A little, little pithy there. It's just for show, God knows. Just for show, God knows. But we can be going through the motions. We can do the right things. We can, oh, well, we need this music style, or we need this environment, or we need... No, if it's all just for show, if it's like, well, that's what I'm supposed to do, that's like, no, 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 no. I know your heart. That's the truth. If we gather here in the pavilion, in the service, online, say, oh, praise the Lord, falling on my knees. An hour later, we're quarreling and bickering and, and being nasty to people? We miss something here. If we're not showing the love, if we're not caring for the oppressed, if we're saying, oh yeah, I'm going to do that, and then I don't, I don't really care what happens to this other person, we're missing what this time is for. We need to make sure we don't put up those blockades to the communication. And it starts by acknowledging that our life is not all about us. It's not all about you. Even worship isn't just about, oh, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to bow my head. I'm going to raise my hands. It's not just all about you individually. Our faith is not just about me. Our time of worship is, is so much more. I want to think about what does 
gathering together, even if it's online, of setting apart that time to focus in and listen to God, to hear the words, to sing, and to participate. Well, it's a reminder of so many important things this time. It's a reminder of who's who. It's a reminder that God's God and we're not. When we sing those worship songs that, that speak of God's grandeur, immortal, invisible, um, how great is our God, whatever your era is, that it's like, that's God. And then we look at ourselves and we're like, oh, hey, and we come and we confess our need for God. It's who's who. It's also what's important. That we can get so busy in life ch chasing after, oh, I got to get this done, I got to do that, I got to impress these people. And we may not realize we're trying to impress them, but so often that's what we're doing in life is trying to impress people. But what is truly important? It's relationships. It's, it's our relationship with others. It's our relationship with God. It's the things that last forever. It's faith. It's hope. It's love, it's joy, it's kindness, it's compassion. These are the things that are truly important. And it's also, it should be, a reminder of what we're called to do. That, that we are called to pursue justice, to, to love kindness, to walk humbly before our God. We're called to care for others. We're called to, to work on our own character. To, to listen to God for how we are to be. So that this time together does all those great things, but it's not the end. It's the launching point. It says, okay, we get together, we worship, we learn, we sing, we encourage each other. And then... It's a launching point for chosen worship. What do we mean by chosen worship? The things that we just heard about. I, I, I want to just stay here for a moment. The launching pad. I really was like, well, what metaphor do I use there? And I wanted to say the foundation for the chosen worship. And don't worry, I'll get to what chosen worship is. But the foundation for everything is Jesus Christ. That's the foundation. The worship is not the foundation. But it's a launching pad. It's like, okay, well, we're going to come together and... Boom, we're going to go from here into the chosen worship. So if we take out the word fasting, say, well, that's what they were doing to show their devotion, and we put in worship, this is one thing that we do to show our devotion. And go back to verse 6. Is not this the kind of worship I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked to clothe him, and do not turn away from your own flesh and blood? That is the worship that God has chosen. So we start with this worship as a reminder of the true worship. Because if worship is focused attention on the worth of God, well, let me tell you, when you are serving others, when you're helping others, when you're doing good in the world, you are focusing on God. You're not focusing on yourself. You're saying, what does God want in this work world, and how can I be involved with it? That is, that's like the next level worship. I, I also I, I was like, well, it's the launching pad for real worship. No, this is real worship. It is real worship to sing. It is real worship to to pray, it's real worship to um, join our voices and learn. But the next level is when we get involved in freeing people, in feeding people, in sheltering people. It opens up communication. When you get active in what God wants in the world, God will answer. That's what it says here in the Bible. That's what it says again and again. It's those people are out doing that are most getting the messages from God. It's what Isaiah says that God will answer when we're worshiping in this way, a very active worship with our lives, our whole lives being an act of worship. Now that may sound intimidating. Wait, I have to go out and change the world? Well, the great thing is we're not alone. This is why Jesus came. Do you know how Jesus started his teaching? Do you remember that in, in the, the book of Luke? Jesus, after he was baptized, he went into the wilderness, he came back, he started going around into the synagogues. 
traveling around, because that's where people came to learn about God, and, and he would teach in the synagogues. And he got to his hometown, and they handed him the scriptures, big old rolls, and it, it was Isaiah that they handed it to him. And he opened it to where it said, and this is Isaiah 61, as we mark it, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Rolled it up and said, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. He said, I am here to do that. When we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, the one prophesied by Isaiah 700 years before his coming, the one who came as a substitutionary atonement for the sins of our lives, he calls us to join in his work. The work of the Father, the work of God. He says, listen to this. Listen to what God wants. God wants to free the oppressed. God wants to give hope to the poor. God wants to comfort the brokenhearted. God wants to give light to those in darkness. You want to hear? You want to be guided? You want God to say, here I am? This is what we should be involved with in our lives in this world. This uh, past week, we ended up with a surplus of um, food for the anchor that was all perishable. And it was in these giant boxes, and we ended up with, with like this massive thing that we, we maxed out the refrigerator from the school district and from the anchor and here at church. So the back of my suburban ended up with a bunch of these boxes, too. And so we got to go around in the family and, and play Santa Claus and, and deliver a bunch of those boxes the other night. Um, does anybody want one of those boxes? <laughs> All right. Um, Tobiah, could you go in the refrigerator there and um, pull out a box? Now, we still have three left. Yeah, but can't they get it later? No, no, this is part of the sermon illustration. <laughs> They're never going to forget this, huh? <laughs> All right. So, oh, but I forgot which pocket I put my mask in. Oh, there's, yeah, I found my mask. Oh, uh, the mask I you oh, the mask over here. Thank you. Well, I'm going to take it and see. I mean, this is a serious box, all right? It's, it's the, the farmers, the families, and this is going to the Brunetto family now. Thank you. There we go. Mm. Yeah, see, they're serious. You want one, too? We'll get you one, too, all right? Because we are getting into families, but we're not going to do that now. Um, because my point is, that's fun. All right, it was fun to give out food and, and to say, hey, here it is. And, and we gave it to various different families, um, some of which it was just like an added bonus. Others was like, this is really helpful. But we did not give it to anyone who was starving to death. All right, in our country, it, that's one of the great things of America, is that there, there is an abundance of food. Sometimes we have a little trouble figuring out how to get it to people, and there's an injustice there. But there is an abundance of food, and... I mean, other than when I go to the beach, I don't really see naked people running around. All right? There, there aren't people that, that are running around that, that don't have clothing. And, um, you know, that we have homeless shelters and way to care for people. In this country, often, this call is not about the physical. Sometimes it is, and, and we need to be involved. We, we support the Anchor Food Pantry and Capital City Rescue Mission. But what, when we hear these lines... Uh, feed the oppressed, give hope to the poor, comfort the brokenhearted, light to the darkness. Often this is so much more spiritual than physical in this country. Now around the world it's a different picture. Around the world there, there's often spiritual vitality and real scarcity of some of the physical things. And that's where we can really get involved in, in great ways with, with meeting some of those physical needs through church world service, through Pastor Stewart, through Food for the Hungry, other things. But here in this country, often it's the lies that people are trapped in. That I'm not good enough. I can't. The anxiety, the depression that, that traps people, oppresses people, keeps them in darkness. The hopelessness of being in an inner city environment where you can't see anything different. That 
is what we can be involved with. Of saying that Jesus Christ is the hope for not just the world, but for individuals. And Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Jesus Christ is the truth. And, and living that out so people can see a different way to live. And when we see people who are bound up by these, these oppressive forces, giving them hope. Sharing them, with them the joy that you've found, the good news you have found. Pointing them to Christian resources and saying, hey, okay, right now, it's real easy. You don't even have to show up. Just, just click online and you can watch and you can hear a message of something different. This is the worship, the fasting that God wants us to be involved with. Jesus said, hey, I came to preach good news to the poor. I came to proclaim freedom for captives, release from darkness for the prisoners. Jesus came to do that. And Jesus went back up to the Father. But guess what? Jesus is still active because we, the church, are called to be Jesus in this world. We are called to be Jesus' hands and feet in this world. Now, I've actually had pushback, like, wait, wait, I'm not Jesus. No, you're not Jesus. 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 Even we're just like a, a, a little bit of Jesus, but the church global. When we are doing what we are called to do, we are Jesus in this world. That is a call to be involved with these things. To fight injustice. To care about those who do not have. To share good news with Jesus, of Jesus with people. To bind up and care for the brokenhearted. When we do these things, not just for show, but out of a love and appreciation for God, out of a seeking to serve God and love God. And it says, we have something to listen to because God's going to answer. God's going to guide. God's going to say, here I am. So on the back of your sermon notes, there are actually encounter group questions. We're not formally starting encounter groups, but I encourage any encounter groups that want to, figure out how to do it in these times. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start providing these questions. But down at the bottom of that, there's something that any one of us can do. And there, um, I don't remember the order I have them in, so I'm going to ask Josh to hand me a sermon notes. First one, have you signed up to participate in the crop walk? In right? two weeks, we're going to be involved with the crop walk, which is church world service, which is meeting those physical needs of people around the world in crisis. And you can go to this website, and you decide. You donate to somebody who's walking, or you sign up and say, I'm going to walk. It's pretty easy. And then on the 18th Sunday um, at 12.45, we're going to meet at the, um, the convent uh, where the Anchor Food Pantry is, and we're going to take a three-mile? 3.2-mile uh, walk through town as a reminder to ourselves of all the walking the poor do as a witness to the community, but also as just that point of, hey, let's, let's do something, raise some funds, and support the, what God's doing in the world. Then, you can also pack a shoebox that Samaritan's Purse. They are doing this exact work of meeting the needs of the poor around the world, and one of their sort of um, special bonuses is they give the kids in those communities boxes of joy and love and care and we get to pack them up and then send them out so you can learn more about that at the website and then also I know some of you sponsor children uh, Jen and I worked with Food for the Hungry for um, five years Food for the Hungry is a great organization we know how they work and when you sponsor a child it goes to that child in that community and supports all around that child and you get to say, hey, here's my child. You get a picture of them. They send you updates throughout the year of what's going on in that child's life. And I think it's currently $38 a year, where, or a month, not a year, a month where you're um, sending that money to support that child and getting involved with what God's saying. So there are just three very concrete ways that any one of you can at least do one of these, and many of you can do all three of these. So those are opportunities. And then to be open to listening where is God calling me to share in my community, with my friends, with my coworkers, with my family, the good news of Jesus Christ? Let's pray. 
Dear Lord, we thank you so much that you are faithful. You are there. You desire to um, connect with us. And that we need to seek your ways, to follow in the footsteps of Jesus in caring for the brokenhearted, for those who are in darkness, for those facing injustice and oppression. Lord, help us to use our voices, our resources, our lives for your purposes in this world. Because we know when we hear that when we do that, that you will guide us, you will answer us, you will show yourself to us. Thank you for this promise, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Turning again to the scriptures, Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals your diseases, who redeems you from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and and justice for all who are oppressed. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse nor keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. For he knows how we are made. He remembers that we are dust. As for mortals, their days are like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. Its place knows it no more. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And um, just find ways to be generous. Find ways to help others. Find ways to put on that clothing of Christ so that people see us as different and that we can have that open communication as we're active in our lives and answer, hearing answers from God. Anything else? All right, let's turn to the Lord in prayer and feel free to, to offer up any prayer requests that are on your heart. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for your heart for the oppressed. We thank you and praise you for your um, heart for justice. Lord, we thank you and praise you for your heart for us and those we know and love. Lord, hear our prayers as we lift them up to you this morning. We pray for the family for strength as they are saying goodbye to their loved ones. Yes, Lord. I want to offer our prayers for the president and everybody suffering from the COVID virus. Yes, Lord. For Gina, who had the participation in her installment. Yes, Lord. Yes, please. For Greg, who's scheduled to have surgery to install a pacemaker this week. you that you are bigger than any request we can bring to you you just ask us to come to you with thanksgiving presenting our request to you lord hear these prayers and the ones in our hearts unspoken and 
We just pray for your involvement, your activity, your answers, Lord. We look around us and see so much that needs your touch. So many hurting people, so much injustice in this world, so many who need your light in their lives. We thank you for sending your son to walk among us, to know our pain, to know the hardship of this life, and to be a conqueror over it. We thank you for his light, his love, his sacrifice, and his example. We pray according to the words he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 